Welcome to the WT FFF Special Series, brought to you by the Z and 3D print teams from HP, where your hosts, Tom and Tracy Hazard, explore the all about the what of 3D workflows from concept to print. Hey everyone, welcome back to WTFFF. I'm Tom Hazard, along with my co-host Tracy. And today we are bringing back to you a very popular episode from several years ago, but we're putting a new little twist on it here with this introduction. And this is a conversation we had about how critical thinking is taught through art and not sciences. That was the original conversation, right. but we want to really add that and expand that. We is taught through art and humanities. And so if we're going to really strengthen 3D education in school, we need to look at critical thinking as one of the aspects. And we've been talking about that as we've been sort of exploring the 3D education format. And so we've got episodes that come before and episodes that are coming after this one as we do an education section in this series um, that we're doing uh, with HP. And we're really taking a look at that. What, is, what does it take to improve 3D education out, uh, outcomes and through improve learning outcomes in general, right? And, and mostly in this, in, we've been talking STEM, the science, technology, engineering, and math. And Tom and I always talk STEAM, science, technology, engineering, big A arts, and math. And we say that because, but when we mean arts, and that's the one thing I think we wanted to clarify here, was we wanted to expand it to include humanities in general. And so that's really important. And I'm a big reader, and I was raised by a liberal arts major. And so one of the, um, one of the posts, uh, the resources we're going to add to this post is an article in the Washington Post about uh, why we still need to study the humanities in a STEM world. And Tom and I, uh, you know, I was raised to believe this, but Tom and I both whole, wholeheartedly agree, and arts and humanities is critical. It's absolutely critical. And, you know, there are certain traits around, you know, liberal arts and arts in general that are super critical and that you and I are real big proponents of, Tracy. And that's, you know, curiosity is a very critical trait. Also creativity and empathy. Right. Empathy is huge in this and it's, it's not to be understated. Right. And I, I want to message this in terms of, okay, what's going on in the world today? We need to start looking at our science our engineering, our math, our technology, and innovation, and all of these things out there to help us do good in the world, to improve the sustainability, to improve a medicine, to improve our access to things like education and our access to things like just manufacturing in general and stable supply chains and all of the things that we've been talking about. And if we don't have an ethical basis, an understanding of what that means, which we tend to get that out of the humanities programs in school, then we don't really have an understanding of anything but the math and but the science, right? And but the basic numbers and details, we need to put it into context as humans, right? And what we're going to do in the world with this. And this is where I think it may get a little controversial here, but, you know, in terms of our viewpoint on this, but we think that, you know, there's a lot of unintended consequences that can come out of technology that can come out of a global economy, right? And these, and we're starting to see what that is, right? The speed of COVID-19 around the world is an unintended consequence of, uh, you know, great aeronautics, right? We can travel all over the world. We now do business all over the world, right? It's an unintended consequence of that. So we now need to make sure that we're adapting and we're understanding what does that mean and how, what is that causing? So, you know, that I think is really our, our big push for something that we're cultivating a more humane and a more humanity in our technology, in our innovation, and in our STEM. And that's why we're such big believers in adding the A. Well, and not only that, Tracy, you know, clearly there's evidence now, you know, at this time as this series is airing, it's the, the summer practically, maybe not officially, but certainly about to be the summer of 2020. We've had so many people because of COVID-19 at staying at home for so long and that you can see now as states have been starting to open up, the real, I would say, hunger that human beings have for human connection, and this is the humanity side of things, right? right? And that they're like really itching to get out and interact with people. 
And, and this is sort of evidence of the need. You know, people tend to have different thinking styles and usually one of four different ones are either creative first or they're people first, you know. Uh, they you need know, human they connection. They need human connection or they're more logistically oriented thinkers of processes and systems or they're numbers. They're purely yeah. numbers people, right? Bottom line, what's the data? But then engineers tend to be very data-based, I think. Data and system first, thinking, right? right? You're somewhere in there. But you know, it's so important to understand that if you only speak toward the numbers and the data, you're leaving out easily half of the, the people, the things that you talk about and the work that you do, there's a good half of the population at least that's not going to respond to just the data and the numbers. Right. And as we look at the World Economic Forum and the types of characteristics of, pe of hiring of people of what they're looking at, by broadening into these hu arts and humanities, you start to also broaden the ability for you to learn how to connect with other people, learn how to have empathy with other people, learn how to get along and do team things. But we also are balancing out, you know, the more that we create the, the digital connectivity, right the more that we have more social more social media more big data right more of these things going on we have finding that there it's essential to bring human judgment into the process right and that it's you know we have curation and we have other issues and we have to inform ai algorithms right and the humanity part of that is, is as important as the numbers right we need to do both and we need to be good at doing both and so that's why we're big proponents of this. And, and that's why we thought we should bring, bring back this episode because it was one of our more popular because we're not criticizing STEM in any way, shape or form. We just want to supplement that so we can make it stronger. And to be honest with you, both of us have found this to be an extremely important part of why we've been successful here because we can have, we can speak on that inspiration and creativity and that bigger, broader level. But we're also looking at what does this mean for humans? Will people buy our stuff? And you know, like how do we, how do we do all of that in that process? Not just how to make this thing. And so that's really, I think, been a success factor for us. So that's also why we wanted to represent this to you. And also, it's just putting into context some of these episodes that are coming back and forth as we really start to take a critical look at our education program and, and really taking a look at, at 3D education in schools and what this means and how we can bring those 3D printers into various parts of the school or the 3D design education, all of those things in the different parts of schools, bringing them into our liberal arts education, bringing them into the social science classroom, bringing in, them in into different places. Now we're integrating better our STEM and our, and our thinking and our thought process and our developing of human beings, right? And isn't that a better way to go? And so I, I just want to end, Tom, with my dad because my dad is an engineer. I mean, he's oh, yeah, an engineer he's by trade, an right? engineer, no question. And when I first met him, <laughs> I don't even want to think of how many years ago it was, Long more, time more than 30 years ago. He, I saw him at the time when I first met him as kind of a black and white thinker, you know, meaning things are either right or wrong. But over time, I tend learned to, to learn differently. Yes, right, but my dad raised me to, because he had a liberal arts education and then went into science through uh, Arizona State University. So he was an ASU grad. And he went into the, the sort of that engineering side of things to become an engineer. And then he worked for Fleur Daniel Corporation for a really long time. And so, and many other companies in the oil and, and industry. And, and so, but what he always brought me was that viewpoints on the world when you read something you should read five books on anything like that's how he always presented it to me he's like I want you to read five viewpoints and you can read something that's a how-to manual or an engineering book or you know anything like that that's technical but then you must read about what was going on in that time period so you must read something historical and then you must read something in literature and then over time I added to that and then you wanted to look at the art look at the paintings look at the at the graphics and illustrations that were going on if they were in newspapers or in other places because when you do that you get a broader look and put the innovation the technology the things that were going on that I'm building off of into context and that's where we really start to understand why things happen and when they happened um, why they occurred at that time period and so when we do that we can start to look at ourselves critically as well and saying you know, hey, I can't, it's not enough to just put out a how-to manual. I need to put out a, a sort of context about 
why 3D printing is taking off in this day and age and what's making that difference. And it's not just because you know, you could look at it hard and fast. It's, there's not just because a bunch of patents were released in 20, in 2009 and, you know, and that, and that opened up the floodgates. You know, there was a need, there was a gap, there was a human interaction thing going on. There was technology and innovation, but there was a driver for more. And that's what we're seeing. So when we can do that in a better way, then we learn more and we become better human beings, better designers, better creators, better engineers, all of those things make us make us better and uh, and broaden that ability. So why, let's definitely bring that 3D education right into our school with this kind of arts and humanities added to it. Well, Tracy, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> you so, did. Well, no, that, that, <laughs> the, the end of that and, the, and what you're learning from your father has taught you. And we wholeheartedly believe in it. We've experienced it. And we hope that, you know, that makes sense to you. And that, you know, you'll appreciate not only this intro, new intro to this episode, but the, the episode that we recorded that, like we said, was very popular. So shall we go to the episode, Tracy? Absolutely. Yeah, we got a good one today that started partially from a question from a listener, but also delves into another subject that we've wanted to talk about for a while. Yeah, so it's kind of obvious from it being WTFFF that we're very comfortable throwing out acronyms here. <laughs> so we throw out a lot of acronyms, which means letters that represent something. And we forget sometimes that we have either newbies in the audience or international audience and that they don't always understand the terms that we're using. And so one of them came to us from outside of the country and said, what the heck is STEM and STEAM? <laughs> and, and it's a, a really good, valid yeah, question. <laughs> yeah, it's a fair question and shame on us for not defining it sooner. And I know a lot of people in the U.S., it's obvious to you, especially those of you in the education field, where we know we have a lot of you teachers and student listeners out there. But for the benefit, and we're just going to address it quickly, and then there's another bigger picture subject related to this we're going to talk about today. Yeah. But let's address that quickly for our international friends who listen to the podcast. So STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. Math, and STEAM is science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So we add the arts in there. And we, if you've listened to the podcast, know that we are big proponents of adding the A and making it STEAM so that we're adding the arts. And our reason for it isn't just because we have the perspective of coming from art school, but it also comes from growing up, my dad was a liberal arts major and went into the engineering world. He worked for a big engineering corporation and was really upset that I didn't want to become an engineer, that I wanted to become an artist instead. However, what it really was, though, was about the fact that he was a liberal arts major and believed in literature and it was always in our house. And that critical thinking comes more through the arts than it does through the sciences and technology and math. And that, I know, is a little bit controversial. Yeah, you're going to need to explain it even to me a bit. Not that I doubt you, but I want to hear the meat behind that. So technology and science and math would not progress if someone didn't critically think about ways to violate the rules. There are rules in math, there are rules in science, and your job is to prove those rules, right? That you makes start sense. with a hypothesis yeah. and you prove it out in science. You start with a proof in math and you dive it down and go through the formula of what that is, right? And that's the essence and the basis of those things. There's nothing wrong with them. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But at some point, you have to critically think to violate that, to do something innovative, to do something disruptive, that, y disruptive to do something that is outside of the normal connection of that straight mathematical process, right? That straight science proof process, right? So when you do that, learning that critical thinking process comes from the arts, comes from the humanities, comes from literature, comes from people being critical, criticizing, and getting your mind to think in that way, getting your mind not to accept the rules, so I am a big proponent of continuing to make sure that all of our science, technology, engineering, and math has a component of that forces that critical thinking through it, that forces the creativity into it. Otherwise, you're just teaching someone how to use a 3D printer. You're not teaching someone how to create using it. How 3D to do printer. something else with the 3D printer, right? Yeah. Right. To make it their own, do their own thing. Right. And don't get me wrong. There's a process by which, you know, at some point you have to learn how the machines run. You have to learn these technical things. There's always a part for that. But that's not the goal of education. That's a means to an end. So that's why I want to keep arts in there because it forces that into the process. 
it just makes that happen when our schools are set up in a way to try to eliminate deviation. <laughs> it's a conformity kind of thing. So whenever possible, we build in the opportunity for essays in our English classes. It's not just a question and answer thing. It's not cut and dried. And that's what we want everybody to come out of school, being able to critically think, because that's how we're going to move things along. Yeah, you know, we see in our communities, in our schools, the old term, the first term people use to describe a lot of these classes and curriculums and I guess pursuits that people go after involving 3D printing were more just STEM. That was the first real term, science, technology, engineering, and math that they used. And they left out the arts. But we see over time now that they're including the A and more of them are calling it STEAM than STEM. It's really sad to me that especially in the United States and hopefully not in a lot of the other countries some of you may be in, but that the arts really got left behind with school budgets and things. And we had art in our schools growing up, but then our kids have a traveling art teacher maybe they see once a month in our public schools. I, ha that. I had that you here had that? in the Irvine Unified School District here in California. In the 80s, you had that? We had 80s. We oh, had a terrible. teacher who came every six weeks. Oh, but every we had it weeks. in our schools throughout... You you know, our schooling in the Northeast where I went to school, but it really has been cut back so much. But I think what's one of the great things that 3D printing is helping to do is to bring the arts back back into the schools? Because you have to be creative. I mean, it, it forces that creativity. So it's forcing it into the curriculum again in classes where it might not have been as logical. But I think that really what it is doing, and you and I believe this strongly because we believe that our design process, the process of design is a process of thinking and that we can innovatively think our way to solutions for any problem that arises because we feel so comfortable doing it every day in our artistic endeavors. It's a comfort level with that critical thinking. It's a comfort level with solution problem solving. We don't feel uncomfortable when the answer isn't cut and dry, yes, no, A, B, C, D, right? right. We're comfortable in that world. Sure, yeah. And, you know, I always really have appreciated that my college education taught me how to think more than anything else. Yes, there were actual techniques I had to learn of, you know, many different things. But really what our art school taught us is how to think. And whenever we approach a project, it's always a thought process first. And then, okay, how are we going to execute that? Right. And then you have rules and limitations. And use tools and other right. things, right? Right. Exactly. So coming up, we're going to have an interview with Steam Maker Workshop, which is out of San Diego. And it was one that our teacher of the year, Cindy Schultz, uh, Cindy Schultz referred us to as to who hired her. And they put the A in their Steam Maker Workshop for a reason, because they believe that they want to encourage innovation and not invention. And they believe very strongly that innovation comes from that kind of arts and critical thinking, which I just love the idea of that. Yeah, that'll be a great episode. And for our listeners, that's coming up in one week from tomorrow. That'll be episode 224. So stay tuned for that one. That, that'll be a very good one. Yeah, and he's very articulate and, and it's just an amazing call, which you weren't on, unfortunately. No, I was away or you something. You were away, yeah, yeah and, I, and I took it without you. So we've been doing an on and off occasional solo thing. And um, well, we just it's had not to as because much of our, fun. I no, we've had to because of our schedule. But it's not as much fun. I agree. I don't get to rib you as much. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. And I think, yeah, I'm not enjoying those as much, but it's a reality of, of a growing business. And Sometimes it's what we happens. need to do it. Honestly, I'm tired of you yawning when I'm doing some Tech Tuesday subjects that are highly technical. <laughs> I, and you're like, oh my gosh, how long do I have to listen to this? I liked yesterday's. Talk yesterday's was a little different. I it was not. It was, yes, still technical, <laughs> but it was not quite as nitty gritty in the trenches of your 3D <laughs> printer technical, which next week's will be again. Oh, okay. 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 Well, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, so we hope that kind of helps explain exactly why we use the term STEM and STEAM and why we feel so strongly that the arts belong in our science, technology, engineering, and math. And if you have any questions like that, I mean, those basic questions, those are why we're here. So if we're not defining yeah. something, send us a message. Yeah, please let us know. And we're sorry we overlooked that. And even, you know what, and just the last tidbit on that is he even asked a follow-up question when I answered that one in email, what does an acronym mean? Because I think that's a very English thing as <laughs> oh well. My gosh, yeah. And you briefly touched on it at the beginning, but just yeah. real quick to wrap this up. An acronym is a word that's created from the first letter of a bunch of other words to sort of 
of shorten something that you're talking about. It's a new word that's created from the first letter of a bunch of little yeah. words. And like so stem and steam. FFF, fuse filament fabrication. fabrication. <laughs> right. Or WTFFF. That is, that is an what acronym. the FFF. Right. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, it is all an acronym. And it happens when you get within an industry that you start throwing around terms. Like I've mentioned and we'll say occasionally 3DP and we write that all the time, but that is 3D printing. So it happens yeah. all the time in an industry and we get a little focused and forget that we have new audience sometimes and new people who are interested in it and we just make it more difficult for them by the mere fact that we forget to define at least some point in the process. Yeah, so, so we're going to try to be better about that. Yeah, but never be afraid to reach out to us yeah. and ask us even a simple question like that. That's an easy one for us to answer and we do answer them. So serve them up. Yep. So you can do that anywhere on social media at HazDesign, H-A-Z-Z-D-E-S-I-G-N or you can go to 3dstartpoint.com. So I'm going to reserve Tom's voice for the next episode that we must record. So this has been Tracy and Tom on the WTFFF 3D Printing Podcast. Thanks for listening to the WTFFF special series brought to you by the Z and 3D print teams from HP. You can access all the resources mentioned in this episode and all the other episodes in this series by going to 3dstartpoint.com slash HP. We invite you to reach out to us on social at 3D Startpoint and at Z by HP and let us know what you are creating in 3D. 